Hey everybody, I'm Delicia. Thanks for tuning in to the Cigar Vixen channel. So today, as promised, I'm going to be walking you guys through the most recent PCA trade show, formerly known as IPCPR, to anybody who's been watching my channel for the last several years. I have been attending every year, um, as do many in the industry. I did kind of a brief little sneak peek at what's in my bag video uh, last Sunday, I believe it was, and kind of just showed you what I brought back. Um, again, I mentioned it on that video that it was kind of a sad bag in the sense that it was very small. Usually um, in all the years past, I always come back with tons of cigars, tons of swag, um, just a lot of goodies. And this year wasn't the case. And while I am extremely grateful to everybody who was in attendance that did, you know, share cigars and things like that, it was definitely noticeable that there were many exhibitors that were not there. There, even the ones that were there, not as forthcoming with, you know, the normal amount of giving cigars away. And that's partially, I think, because of FDA regulations, but also um, coming out of COVID, there were a lot of shortages in the industry as far as not just the basic cigars. Um, I had had a nice conversation with Steve Saka. Everything from boxes, cellophane, the stickers, the cedar for the wood in the box. I mean, all these different things that were affected by COVID last year. And depending on which country is coming from, there are still a few shortages. And while the majority of the factories are kind of back to normal, there are still you know, some COVID precautions in place and things like that. So it's been an interesting year. I don't have to tell you guys that um, I have done like the least amount of travel since I first started my channel uh, almost nine, well, yeah, nine years ago. The travel last year and even into this year has been very limited. I am not somebody that is choosing to do the vaccine, not really wanting to get into that whole thing. That's a whole obviously controversial topic, but um, because of that, I'm just still kind of taking it easy. And so going to the show was definitely fun and it was so great to see everybody that was there. There was quite a few media people that were in attendance. I saw my friends, Cigar Snob was there, Cigar Press, Cigar and Spirits, of course. And I didn't, I saw Cigar Journal and I'm not sure if Cigar Aficionado was in attendance just because I didn't happen to see any of their staff as I normally do. They were probably there. Uh, I just, again, didn't see them. And for the first time ever, I only attended basically a day and a half, which normally, again, I already mentioned it on the other video, but normally I attend, you know, all the days, um, opening night, like little cocktail party and all the different festivities. But this year I just, it was just a different vibe and I had a couple other things going on. So I, I obviously wanted to support and still go to the show, but it just, it was just different. I mean, normally you walk through and there's tons of people. Um, Drew Estate is usually there. They were not there um, obviously this year, but the reason I bring them up specifically is they're always blasting the music. And so you can kind of hear their music all throughout the trade. So even if it's faint in the you know opposite corner, you can still kind of, there's, there's music, there's noise. And this year was very quiet. <laughs> it was oddly quiet. And you could walk the whole entire trade show pretty easily um, as opposed to previous years. I mean, of course I don't help myself because I'm always in heels. I refuse to do flats, whatever. But um, the walking was much easier this year and just not as many people, not as many exhibitors. And again, um, it was, to me, it was very noticeable, but I did, you know, in speaking to the different exhibitors that were present, uh, sales and everything were, were really good this year. <clears throat> so the people that were there were there to buy, which is, you know, the whole kind of the whole purpose of the show for retailers to see what's new, to then incorporate those new cigars into their retail lounges for those of you watching. So like I said, uh, now that I've kind of given that rambling on intro, it's gonna walk you through some of the footage that I did grab. Um, you will be seeing some upcoming reviews of some of the cigars that I did bring back in the bag. Hopefully you saw the video and posted your comments and your votes, if you will, for which cigars you'd like to see me review first. So that being said, let's take a look at the Casada cigar booth. Okay, so Raquel, tell us what's new. I know you gave us a little preview on yes. our Zoom call and I was super stoked to try this beautiful Liga F that I love this Patola. This is definitely, I feel like maybe you guys blended this for me. Maybe, yeah. like I don't know. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but um, I think that you had me in mind. Yeah, no, it's yes. perfect. It's perfect smoke. Really? But um, So yes, tell so us uh, have, what's new. We're so excited to be back in Vegas. You yes. know, we'll see everybody. After all this time, I know. And um, we have the Casa Mayno Ligera, which I have supported for the show. And it's, well, as you're smoking, it's a full body cigar. Yes, it is. Uh, different from what we made before, and so excited that the Casa Mayno has been made in the Dominican Republic now for the first nice. time. That before used to be, you know, we make it in Nicaragua and now yes. in Dominican. Very exciting. Um, 
So the Nicaragua, it had Dominican and Nicaragua fillers. Mm -hmm. The Nicaragua gives it its tang. And then the Dominican gives it all the flavors. Mm -hmm. And the spice and everything that has. It comes in four sizes. Boxes of ten on the George's Rebels to the Toros. Uh -huh. And on the Petit Corona that you smoke, it comes in five packs. Okay. So that's a different Very nice. presentation there. Yes. Uh, okay. With the carton box. Um, we also have the new size on the 1974. Uh, the 1974 was the year that the factory was open. Mm -hmm. So this is a 6x52 Toro. Okay. Um, it's a medium to full body. You sure that if we're Yes, I love that cigar. Yes. Oh. And then we also have the 10 here for the... Uh, this so one, I'm excited. I haven't lit it up yet, but oh, I'm just, I'm really excited to try well, it. Um, the blend relates a lot to the first year that yeah. we started 10 years ago. That's awesome. So if you have smoked Octoberfest from the beginning, then yes. it's going to be something that's going to take you back to oh, those nice. years. Okay, and so a little teaser. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> and it's also boxes of 10 this time. Okay. And nice. that we're really excited about these um, new products that we have. Yeah. So, you know, how long do you normally, at the back of the factory, like start working on these oh projects? Because I know there's a lot that goes a into little, it behind yes, the scenes. You know, all these cigars are already, you know, in the factory, they're aging. Sure. So, we, at least six months, you know, in yeah. yeah. We try to do like before, but then by the time we realize which project we want and then, you know, Oh yeah. Making, but the cigars have been aging for quite a while. Yeah. Months now. How exciting. I know, so exciting. And things are pretty much back to normal now, oh, like on, yes, on the yes. front of so back of the factory, yes, everything yes, is back like to normal. That's wonderful. And we're back in the factory. And we're here in Vegas. At, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, walk us through briefly. I know we've gone over these. These are yes. these are the staple core lines, but just kind of give us a brief little yes. walkthrough uh, well, of, of we, what we have here. Um, on the core lines, we have the Casado Reserva Privadas. That I love, I love too. Yes, like, yes. Uh, if you're a Connecticut fan, it's great smoke. Very the Harbor Falls and also the Oscuros on the on the Casado with the Pagada line. And we have the Tributo that we've, been, we've had for the longest time. That was yeah. the tribute that we had for our yes. family yes. that passed away. Yes. And the Casado España, which is also... That's some, another one of my favorites. Yes. Oh my goodness. Well, the Casamana Colorados, obviously. Oh. You know, the Robusto was the one that came um, 2008. Yes. Of the year. The D Magnus, which is also made in the Placencia factory. Beautiful. Uh, yes. And the Vega Magna, which is our top of the line um, cigar. And I love the box on this. I know. This is just such yes, a cool touch. Is this? Graphic director makes it. So this is more of like a piece you could hang up. Yeah, you can you hang could put it up. That's so cool. And what a nice comes, touch. And then the three sizes, it's a different painting, like a different graphic. Oh, really? Every single oh, I didn't box. realize that. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. Totally. Super that super is beautiful. Nice. Very nice. So in their booth, it's always a pleasure to see Raquel Casada. She's so much fun, so beautiful, and her whole entire staff is great. Um, but of course, Raquel took point and walked me through their entire lineup. So it's really fun to see, you know, the overall portfolio from Casada Cigars. It's a very impressive lineup, including their newest edition, which is the Liga F, which of course is kind of a stronger cigar in their overall lineup. You guys are probably very familiar with their Oktoberfest. Every year they put out a new Oktoberfest cigar. And so this year being the 10th anniversary this coming October, the Oktoberfest 10 year is actually rumored to be very reminiscent to the very first Oktoberfest. Mm -hmm. so. Kind of mentioned that on the what's in the bag video. I look forward to trying to search for an original <laughs> Oktoberfest to do like a maybe a side by side pairing or just kind of some comparing notes because I think it'd be kind of fun to to walk back down that journey 10 years ago with that first Oktoberfest release and then of course try out the the 10th uh, anniversary edition of the Oktoberfest so very fun but again their booth is uh, very lively very fun they had again nice nice box um, portfolios lined up so you could see and um, definitely look at the beautiful artwork there's a there's a couple boxes in particular that have these kind of carved um, pictures on them that are just really beautiful and um, just something to look at and so it's a fun to visit with people and, and again see what's new and then I want to take you over to in my opinion and I believe they actually won the award from the trade show the best booth exhibitor there and that is uh, JC Newman and Cigar so JC Newman put up um, I believe it was Drew Newman's idea because he's kind of like the brainchild now with all these really cool projects they did a 
replica, like an exact replica of the El Relo factory that's in Tampa. They had this massive cardboard display of their entire factory over there, even, I mean, the very front steps. And it was incredible. Um, something that's like, I don't know if you were a little kid and you ever had like a playhouse or something like you would just want to keep that and just hang out in there. It was so cool and very like to scale. Everything was incredibly accurate. And they also had their own historian there that was available to give tours um, inside their kind of like the other side of it, which was like a mock-up of again, the actual factory that you find, including pieces of uh, actual tobacco that were hanging um, to kind of give that whole effect. It was just a really neat idea and a really cool experience and definitely the best exhibitor uh, as far as like booths and everything. I mean, they really did an amazing job. So hats off to JC Newman. So we'll walk through with him and I'll let you guys see, you know, the footage of the beautiful um, cardboard factory that they had there at PCA. All we wanted to do for our trade show booth this year is we wanted to shrink down that factory museum and bring it with us. So this we so made cool. it to scale. I think it's like one six scale, but don't quote oh, me on that. Um, and we made it all out of cardboard. So world so record cool. for largest cardboard trade show booth. Uh, yeah. 3,000, 4,000 pieces, took four days to assemble it. And the coolest one by far. I mean, this is just, wow. And it's Amazing. something that nobody's ever tried before. It's a museum here on the trade show floor. And you see it's, it's very reminiscent of our real life museum down there yes. in Tampa, Florida. You know, we've got all the history about Julius Caesar Newman, building on the company from humble beginnings in his mother's basement. She was actually the company's first sales rep, if you think about it. Yeah. She went to a local grocery wow. store, got them to order 500 cigars from her son, and that's how the J.C. Newman Cigar Company was born. Isn't so before amazing? any of our sales reps here on the on the uh, um, PCA trade show floor here is Anna Newman. Wow. And you know, a lot of the cigar brands that we started making with J.C. Newman back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. We still make to this day, so we've been making them on and off for almost 100 years now. For a lot of cigar companies, you're trying to create story behind your mm -hmm. cigar, right? You're, that's how you market it. You want right. that romance, you want that authenticity, yes. you want that history. For us, we've got 126 years of history behind yeah. So that's for like amazing. the Brick House, it's one of the oldest brands that we own in our portfolio. Um, the story behind it is J.C. Newman's brick house that he grew up in Austria-Hungary before he emigrated to the United States. So there's just I a didn't lot realize of that about the brick house. Yeah. Okay, thank you for putting that. In. I didn't. Yeah, that's seems like I should know that, but I, I didn't realize that that's what it was. And a lot of our Tampa brands have been making in Tampa for a very long time, like mm -hmm. Questa Ray. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure everyone smoked Questa Ray yes. since you know before. We've been making that brand nonstop since 1958, so it's one of our oldest continuously made brands. This is an actual photo. Yeah, that is a photo. Uh, didn't wow. print exceptionally well. But no, you but it's see, really neat. I mean, because right. here it looks like she's doing the deveining. Is that what that that machine so that, looks those like? Those are cigar making machines. Oh, okay. It looked like the little the ones that devein them, but that that's so cool. Right. So in our factory, wow. we have these 1930s Aranco AMF cigar yeah. making machines, and they produce like 4,000 or 5,000 cigars a day. Yeah. And what you do is you just put half the tobacco leaf on there, cuts it out, rolls yeah. it onto a cigar, and boom, you've got a short filler cigar. That's so cool. So that's what most of our production is in Tampa, Florida. I love this too. This just adds to the whole. That's wow. that's real tobacco. We treated it with glycerin because we knew we were going to be in Vegas and we couldn't right. have it drying out on us. <laughs> so we brought that romance with us with all the old and new brands side by side. So this is the first actual American. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That was that's one of the that's old American boxes. Amazing. Yeah. When our factory was built back wow. in 1910, the first brand that came out those doors was the American. Right. So Drew Newman, flash forward 110 years later, he wants to recreate an all-American brand. So what better name than the American? So we brought it back, it's historic. That but I was track up so cool. a box wow. of 100. So that tax stamp wow. right there shows how many cigars are supposed <laughs> to be packed in that box. And a, a box of 100 back in like the 1940s, you'd have a very small turnaround window because yeah. Boveda does not exist. Yes. So you'd have oh to sell gosh. those 100 cigars as quickly as possible, else you're going to be dry yeah. cigars. Wow. But then, you know, coming around. I mean, you don't way. even see boxes of 100. I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's so neat. The door. That's awesome. It's just like the real doors in the that factory. That is just uh, really, really cool. And then we've wow. got stuff about how we make our handmade cigars today. Obviously, the American is handmade in Tampa, but we also get handmade cigars from Dominican Republic and Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been partnered up with the Fuente family for 35 years. Oh, that's a live feed. Oh, that's of the our actual factory. factory. Yeah. yeah. 
That's the floor down there where we're making all the uh, brick houses in Perla del Mar by hand. Really awesome. high production output. Wow. You see the romance of the old and the new. Yeah, and then the mold. I mean, that has to be one of my favorite pieces that you guys have, those vintage molds. That's right. just so cool. And I, I hate to disappoint you, but the two for five cents is not a <laughs> trade show deal. Dang it. That's just one of the old boxes. I was going to say, sign me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. Thanks for touring me through. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. this is... Um, We'll do it again at the real place, but I feel like I'm already there. So right, you've done like you've done like two proxy <laughs> I've done tours. virtual. You've done the virtual yeah. tour, and you've seen the scale model. So now you need to see the real thing. Oh yeah, like this is so cool, though. Thank you. And then, of course, being the oldest American family-owned cigar brand out there, it's really cool. It really lends to the legitimacy of telling their story when you can actually see all these vintage photos and um, just you know the old cigar molds and even the the vintage boxes i was really blown back by the the vintage box of the american of course now in the last uh two years they had the kind of the newer rendition of the american which is an old classic and seeing the vintage box was really cool again it just lends to that legitimacy of the brand history not something that has to be you know fluffed or or marketed if you will it's just a legitimate story and it's nice to have them there to tell it and it was also a treat to get to uh, talk with Bobby Newman of course um, you know just to kind of see him and I, I always enjoy I seem to enjoy the cigars that come from somebody's pocket even more than the ones that are just in the box of cellophane so um, I you know was definitely uh, lighting up that American that he gave me that was like from his little shirt pocket which was really really cute and also the cigar that I'm smoking right now which is the Padron 1964 anniversary came uh, from Jorge Padron so it's a, something special when somebody like that, you know, actually gives the cigar to you. It's kind of extra special in my opinion. And then of course my good friends over at Miami Cigar, alongside La Aurora, they had a co-booth as they do every year. The first person I saw, of course, was uh, Nestor Miranda. I talk about him all the time in videos. Um, if you've never had the chance to meet him, you're definitely missing out. He's somebody to seek, you know, events where he's gonna actually be there just to talk to him. He's got some incredible stories. I, w I wouldn't even say the equivalent to the Dos Equis guy. He's like pff, just way better. Like he's just is such an interesting character. Just a cool person to know. And again, sit down and talk anything with him. Cigars, watches, uh, hunting. He's a big hunter. He does like these different safaris, which brings me to the cigar, the Don Lino, which of course was um, the last few years or so revamped and reblended by AJ. Um, just to just to really bring out the unique flavors and just an excellent cigar. So they had, of course, the Don Lino Africa on display. They had the um, the Ordage cigar, which was in this beautiful jars. And then, of course, my other very good friend Manuel Inoa, master blender for La Aurora, was there. Um, and it's just such a pleasure to see him. He actually uh, did me the favor of lighting up my cigar for me, and I would think I was smoking at that moment he was lighting up a la aurora 107 because that one is a gem uh, just like a go-to classic for me so again they had a, just a very kind of a simple um, very familiar booth and just again kind of like a little family reunion just going in there and talking to everybody not necessarily anything um, crazy new that they were bringing out but just expanding their current portfolios with some different batolas and just some beautiful packaging so definitely a brand that in my opinion, really doesn't need any formal introduction. They've been around for so long and they make incredible cigars. So definitely one to try out if you have never have. And then the funny part is I stopped over to see my friends at Rocky Patel's booth. So I said this on the uh, Sunday, uh, what's in my bag video that I snuck in my two brother-in-laws for a couple hours just to walk around because they're, they're cigar smokers and they happen to be in Vegas with my sisters. And so I thought it would be fun to just kind of bring them in and let them walk around and just kind of get a feel for like what it looks like behind the scenes. So don't tell anybody. But um, no, so I took him into Rocky Patel's booth. And of course, you know, Rocky was like MIA at that moment that I went in there. But Nish and Nimish were there. So we got a chance to talk to them. And um, really, I, I, I definitely um, failed on my uh, media part because I did not go back in there and do the whole walkthrough to capture what's new and all that. So my apologies to you and also to um, Rocky Patel and all his team because I meant to go back and it just the day got away from me and I had other appointments and I just 
I didn't get to go back in there. So I just went in there briefly, but in the booth, um, you know, they always have an incredible booth. They always have like live music going on. They're serving beer. It's like, hey, come and sit at the table and talk to people and all that fun stuff. But they're always really busy naturally. They have tons of retailers that are there to see them and put orders in. So I always like to kind of sneak in and say hi and just kind of do my thing. Um, so not to disturb the, the sales orders that are coming through. But um, they did have a gentleman in their booth that was introducing a newer concept, which I thought was kind of cool. And that was the um, Tubo, which is a super unique type of custom space saving humidor. Unlike anything else on the industry, it's like these beautiful um, kind of small glass um, humidifying types of displays that naturally they're going to be for like the retailers. I'm sure there are some people that would maybe want to have, if they have like a large humidor in your home, maybe use this type of thing for um, displaying the cigars. It's actually like a place where you put the cigar in a tube and then it, um, it it's just a, a convenient space saver and it looks really pretty. So just something different. I always like to see what's new. That was kind of like a cool um, something that is, um, I guess you would consider that more in like an, of an accessory, but just kind of a neat idea. So that was fun to meet that person and kind of see what he had going on. And then while I was walking over to see one booth, I had um, a gentleman that brought me a box of cigars and was like, you gotta come see my booth. And basically I talked about them and I showed you guys the box already, um, but it's the Casa 1910 and it's a Mexican company that they produce and do all things related to their product that's 100% Mexican. So what stood out to me is they actually have a Sumatra wrapper grown in the San Andres region. So really unique. Cinco y seis años de añejamiento, cada uno de los tabacos. La capa es Sumatra, igual de, de San Andres, con tres años de, de San añejamiento. Andrés? Sumatra. San Andres, Veracruz. Ay, no sabía Semilla que Sumatra cultivada en San Andres. What? Um, I hadn't stumbled upon anybody else that's doing a Sumatra grow, you know, wrapper grown in um, Veracruz. So really cool. So they have um, one cigar um, that they brought out to the trade show and just really cool presentation. Of course, I'm a little partial, but I thought they actually were really, really neat. So the box itself, um, bright orange lacquered, beautiful box with the branding. They have, of course, the snake uh, that you'll find similar on the Mexican flag. They had a lot of um, imagery of like vintage photos from the revolution. Of course, 1910 is the year of the Mexican revolution. And so they really went with that full, full all the way around circle of the branding, which I thought was really neat. And um, I appreciated uh, them taking the time to do that kind of history and just really bringing attention uh, to the Mexican heritage. And so, I just thought it was a really awesome brand that was probably, um, I don't like to pick out favorites because, but I will. I mean, I, I definitely told you that JC Newman was my favorite overall presentation, like their booth. They were the coolest booth um, at the show. Um, this would be my favorite uh, new brand um, and just awesome. I just think they were really cool. And even the matches that they had that were branded were made from a family in Mexico that has been making these matches for like years. I forget the whole story, but it was really neat. So I definitely plan on doing a review of their cigar and really giving you more details about it because I just thought it was really, really neat. But they stood out to me, definitely nice people. Um, just, I loved the whole package of presentation that they were doing and their cigar was really good. I did smoke one, smoked excellent, really nice flavor and just um, loved the overall experience of smoking that cigar. From there, I stopped over to La Paulina because um, they had, well, I, I saw Bill Paley sitting there, so I always like to go sneak a hug in with him. And then they had, um, they always have like a little bar, <laughs> which is bad. They have a little bar. So they have like coffee, beer, rum, whatever. Like if you just need like a quick little, um, whatever break, um, and plenty of room to sit down. So I stopped in there momentarily. They do have some new packaging for their Kill Bill series. You guys should be familiar with that by now. Kill Bill is an awesome cigar. Um, I loved the lineup. And again, the packaging was really fun, very uh, flashy in your face, kind of like new and just exciting. So if you were to walk into a humidor and you saw that, it's like just grabs your attention. You'd almost think it was a brand new brand, but of course Kill Bill has been around for a little while. So again, newer packaging, um, just kind of, that was really the focus of their booth. And um, yeah, just nice to see everybody that was there in the La Paulina area. So, mm -hmm. so then I stopped into Gurkha and Gurkha always has a huge display and they kept that true this year. It didn't look any different than 
than previous years. Um, they had most of their sales team, including my brother, Shervin. He is my brother from another mother. I love that guy. So I stopped in and saw him. You know, Juan, of course, who does a lot of their um, different, like the blending aspect of things. He's like been in the game for a long time. So it was just, again, nice to see familiar faces. And they were generous enough to gift um, a few bags of, of their lineup um, all together. So again, Gurkha. Gurkha was fun to just kind of go through their booth and just kind of see people. Again, the show itself, I feel like, was just so different vibe this year. Not like the traditional, um, you know, sitting down and doing interviews or doing these formal walkthroughs where they take you to each display. It was just a totally different vibe this year. So if you're wondering why my video is kind of like just me narrating, that's kind of the reason. It was just a different feel um, from this year. And then, of course, I mentioned this on the what's in the bag video but the stick the stick was the coolest accessory not because it was the only accessory i brought back <laughs> but actually it was the coolest one that i saw at the show and that was the the little case that i had and it's um you know a carrying case beautiful display black leather with red uh, stitching on it and then it has the nice cutter it has the specialized uh, custom little stick that you can use to smoke your cigar all the way down to the nub as well as a cool lighter and they come in different colors so definitely check out check them out visit their website check them out on um, on social media stick the stick um, really cool concept and a great gift for yourself or anybody else and or anybody else <laughs> but definitely um, fun. I always appreciate people that, you know, stop me when I'm walking and it's like, hey, come here, come check this out. And here you go. I just, it's really nice. So that, that stood out to me and was just a really cool accessory. Then we also stopped and saw, there's a gentleman who wrote a book called Cigar Bliss. And it's a way to basically develop your palate to kind of taste all the different nuances. And he had this little game thing that he was, I think he was trying to stump me, but I won. And I should have bet him because I think people actually place bets. It's like this little board and he has you smell uh, like a, an unmarked um, spice or something. And, um, you know, he had me smell it and he was like, it's like almost like a little chess board or checkerboard or something where you're guessing, um, okay, what is that, that what, what is that note that I just got? And of course I nailed it. Hello. Sorry, not to brag, but I kind of know my stuff. So anyway, um, but it was a really neat concept of really engaging people. And it's something where I was, I was asking him, like, do you go out to lounges and do this? Because this would be a cool thing to like invite people watching that, you know, those of you who are like, hey, I'm trying to develop my palate to taste some of these things you're talking about in your reviews. Like I never taste, um, you know, anise, like what, how do you do that? So it's a cool way to really develop your palate. And so there's a book and um, something that I believe you can just order online. So Cigar Bliss is the name of it, but it was fun to meet him. He's reached out to me on a couple emails to introduce his, what he's doing. And it was always nice to like, you know, put a face with the name and kind of really get hands on and see what he's doing, which I thought was a really neat idea. Manny Iriarte is somebody who does some incredible art and you cannot miss him. He's on social media. Um, I've known him just when he was like hanging out at the Fuente booth. Now this year he had his very own booth with like these gorgeous humidors, cufflinks, um, lighters, cutters, ashtrays, everything that's cool. That's to me, it screams like Miami elegance. Um, it's just like all these cool bright colors. It's mostly Fuente stuff that he does. In fact, I think it's all Fuente but um, he does this really, really unique artwork. And if you have any Fuente fanatics in your life, this is a great gift. Or if you yourself are looking at something just totally different, um, definitely check out Manny Idiarte. So the man that I sat down with probably the longest and just because I love to sit down and just pick his brain about things and just let him talk is Steve Saka. So Steve Saka, and I did mention this kind of like a spoiler alert on the what's in the bag video, but my Favorite new cigar of the show was one of his. It was the Stillwell. Ingenious idea, not um, even surprised really because he just always comes up with these really cool things. He had the Stillwell Star, the English Navy Aromatic. Uh, he went through and I'll kind of give you some, I'll let you watch some of his interview. The answer I've been giving everybody about how are things, everything sucks but sales. Sales have been tremendous. Good. I mean, so sales have been great. Um, all the stuff to make stuff happen has yeah. been really, really, it's been a challenging year and it isn't getting any easier yeah. now that the economies are starting to open up. 
we're just seeing shortages in the weirdest things. Yeah. Shortages in certain adhesives, shortages in certain inks, shortages in certain papers. That's what so, I was curious about. I know like there was different, obviously the the rolling and the things like that, but all the other components that go into it had yeah, to have been affected. I mean, it's been really affected. Yeah. And, and you see some major manufacturers now, they're choosing to just ship cigars and refill bundles. Yeah. Because they're so far behind on boxes. Yeah. And you know, it's not just getting someone to build a box, it's getting the wood, it's getting the hinges, it's getting the clasps. Sure. It's just everything has been just difficult. Yeah. Another pressure that we're all really feeling right now is there's a real shortage of filler material across the board. Well, these increases in production have everyone chewing through a lot of their standing inventories. Yeah. And we had a really poor growing season this year in Nicaragua. Uh, you know, the hurly hurricane came late in the season last year. Yeah. Uh, if it didn't destroy your seed beds, it definitely delayed you a minimum of three weeks, mm -hmm. in most cases four or five. So the first planting was done very late. Yeah. So the second planting started off late. But what ended up happening, and it happening was we had a tremendous freak rain and hailstorm that in Esteli, it washed out like 20% of the late harvest crop in the field. And on top of that, there was so much water that we were in a mad dash to pull the tobacco out of the field before it died. Now the tobacco was healthy, yeah. but it should have been in the field an extra four or five weeks, yeah. which would have made it bigger, yeah. which would have given us more weight. So we now are getting a lot of tobacco that is not of the same weight that we're used to. Yeah. And then on top of that, we also have the dilemma of now we're trying to cram tobacco into these barns yeah. that we weren't planning on harvesting for, we were gonna harvest this much the next week, this much the next week as we primed it off. Wow. So now we're trying wow. to cram the last four to five weeks of leaf all into the barn simultaneously with what we've been harvesting. And it's not like we have like random open barn yeah, space. The barns yeah. are sized based on the it's amount of tobacco It's all pretty much planned out told. every year, yeah. It's just, wow. I don't know. It's And of course, I don't want to talk about the political situation in Nicaragua, but election years are always very interesting. Yeah. So, like I said, sales are fantastic, but everything else, my God. Yeah. That's <laughs> what I was really curious <laughs> about. Like, I mean... Whew, I could use a little bit of peace, serenity yeah. somewhere. How often are you going down there? I'm there every like month. like you're there all the time. I was there three weeks of last month. I was there two weeks of the month before. I've been, since I could start traveling again in January, I've been going as frequently as possible because I lost out on the whole COVID year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't travel to Nika since February of last year, and I didn't make it back the entire year because, I mean, the borders were closed. I mean, yeah. even though the country wasn't officially closed, Yeah. the Costa Rican and Honduran borders were closed. And the airport was closed, so yeah. for all effective purposes, right? How are you gonna Nicaragua get there? was closed, yeah. even though they never said they were. Sure, sure. So, man, that's that's exactly what I was wanting to know. You're the first person to actually get into it, because everyone else kind of sugarcoats everything. And yeah. I figured as much. I mean, it makes sense that it would be just a shit show. Oh, like, I, mean, I have a box picker now that I'm having to give him my box order for next March. Wow. We're probably in the best place we've been in over five years time. Right. We we don't have a deadline right now hanging over our heads. Yeah, yeah. Which has always been the case for the last five years. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I don't know what the future holds, yeah. but it is nice to see the relief that we could not achieve in the legislative end or on the bureaucratic end, we do seem to be achieving on the legal end. Yeah. Regretfully, yeah. it's really expensive and it takes a long time, but yeah, never ending battle. The courts are ruling in our favor about how unjust these regulations are and how misguided they yeah. are. So we have three new things. Um, the first two are just line extensions. Mm -hmm. um, we've added a small format to Mi Rita Tricky Traca. Mm -hmm. It's in the same size as the Gordita. Mm -hmm. It's a 4x48. Um, it's essentially tricky traca, but how you would expect to smoke smaller. Yeah. It's a bit more punchy, it's a little bit more spicy. It's really good cigar for people that like on the stronger side of things. Yeah. Terrible cigar for other people. It's gonna be a little too biting, a little too harsh. Yeah. Um, but I mean, so we added that. Um, I was going to release a cigar last year called Paladin Bissaka. Uh -huh. um, normally when I make a blend, I'm done with it. Then after I smoke it for a year or a while, I kind of like, oh, I could have done this, I could have done that. So I, you, you'll see me nibble around the edges, like with Sober Mesa. Yeah. You know, it was 
you know, Elegante and Sir Churchill came a year later. Mm -hmm. You know, I added the Clonsdale, which is a slightly different blend of Totos. Yeah. You know, Tricky Traca is really a different blend of Mique Rita. Yeah. So I have a habit of doing it. Blue is a little different yeah. than the other brulees. Yeah. And I did the same thing with Sin. I wanted Sin to have a little bit more body, a little bit more richness. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I always wanted it to be a smooth cigar. That was always the intent. Sure. But I tend to lean a little heavier, yeah. so I just wanted to amp it up a little for me. Yeah. And um, so I've been smoking this variation of Sin for the last couple of years. It's only in one size, seven by fifty. Nice. Um, it's the same basic materials with the filler recipe changed a bit, but then I also added some Pennsylvania seed leaf. But oh, I didn't nice. use the leftover wrapper that we often use as a tripa replacement. Uh -huh. I actually sourced really good quality Lajero for it. And, uh, and another change I made too was, I liked the flavor and the depth I was getting out of the pen, but I was also getting a little bit of a bite factor from it because of the string. So what I ended up doing is, unlike with the other Sins, which are semi prensado soft press, mm -hmm. with this one it's a full press, because mm -hmm. by pressing it, it just slows down the combustion, mm -hmm. and slowing down the combustion, it got rid of that little bitter bite that I was getting in the tail end, so it mm -hmm. lets it be stronger, but it lets it remain smooth. Yeah. And because I was planning on doing it last year, yeah. I didn't do it last year, they now will have a full year of age on it. So That's awesome. it is now a feature. Awesome. Isn't that what you call yeah. that? Yeah, it's now a feature. Yeah, it's been aging for a year. Yes, it's been aging for a year. Oh. So uh, That's but exciting. it's really expensive. We won't sell a lot of it. You You're know, so funny. it'll be <laughs> it'll be it is what it is. And then, you know, the one that everybody's like, you know, talking about is the the Stillwell Star Project. Yeah. Yeah, still I saw your, I saw your IG post on that. Here's yeah. the here's the facts for the ones who want it on IG. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so I have been a closet pipe smoker for three decades. I did not know that. Yeah, and I don't make a big deal out of it. Yeah. You know, because and I say these words and I know, but it, it isn't on brand. It isn't on message. Sure, sure. I'm in the cigar business. I'm a cigar smoker first. Right. But when I started getting into smoking, um, Really, cigars were too expensive for me. I was enlisted in the Navy. Yeah. You know, you could buy a really high quality pipe tobacco for, you know, $10 for two ounces. And yeah. I could smoke 20, 25 times yeah. for my $10. So <laughs> I became pretty proficient with a pipe. But most people don't. Most people, they're really interested and they try it, but they can't keep it lit. And when they can, they get such a severe tongue bite that it makes the experience really unpleasing to them. And um, so most people try, but they don't stick with it. Yeah. And the reason why is it is complex because the moisture level matters, yeah. but depending on the tobacco is different moisture levels that you so want. I've never done a pipe. Right. And depending on and how you pack the pipe is different yeah. depending on the tobacco and depending on the cut. Sure. And the bowl size matters and the chamber depth matters and the yeah. chamber diameter matters. Even the, oh my gosh. Even the drill hole size Sounds really matters. complicated. So it's really, <laughs> right, there's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of fiddling and there's yeah. a lot of this. So for many years, for like, I don't know, I started doing this maybe like 22 years ago. I would take some of my favorite pipe tobaccos yeah. and I would just casually add them to 20 cigars, 50 cigars for me to smoke. So I've been doing this for a very, very long time. That's awesome. You never cease basis. to amaze me with all your little, you know, and you keep it real casual. Like, oh, this is just, you know, you're yeah, so funny. because well, I never had any intent of selling because here's the problem. Well, I'm not a pipe tobacco expert. Right. I was just taking pipe tobacco that I like to smoke in a pipe. Yeah. That I bought at full retail. Right. Carrying a couple cans of it with me down to Nika and say, hey, yeah. can you throw this in uh, this uh, this blend over here? Yeah, can yeah. you throw that over there? So anyways, a couple of years ago, uh, a gentleman approached me and he's like, hey, I want you to know I really love your cigars. I, you know, boom, boom, boom. I like this. I like that. You know, and I'm yeah. like, oh, that's really cool. It's really nice to meet you. Oh, I'm Jeremy Reeves. And I'm like, I'm looking at this dude. And I'm like, I kind of know him, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm like, are you Jeremy Reeves from Cornell and Deal? Mm. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> well, obviously to the cigar people, they have no clue who he is. Yeah. But Jeremy Reeves is like a legend to the pipe geek guys. Okay. Right? He's one of the head master blenders of pipe tobaccos in the nice. United States. Okay. And Cornell and Deal is one of the few American pipe tobacco manufacturers that does high level craft boutique style yeah. pipe tobaccos. And uh, I said, Jeremy, 
I, I love your work, man. I smoked your Pirate's Cake. I smoked your Bayou Morning, Oriental Silk. Yeah. Your Corn Cob Pipe is one of my favorite aromatics. <laughs> so we just started geeking out together, yeah, right? Yeah. And I told him about this whole thing where, you know, for many years, I've taken some of your pipe tobacco and put them in cigars. I said, well, that's kind of cool. That's so can you really send cool. me some? Yeah. yeah, no problem. When I get home, I'll send you some. Yeah. COVID year happens. I can't go to Nicaragua. Yeah. So I kind of like I'm talking to Jeremy. I said, Jeremy, you know, I've been a pipe geek for a long time. And I know a lot, mm-hmm. but I know it secondhand, cursory, what I've read. Yeah. Do you think I could come down to South Carolina and hang out with you in the factory? Wow. So I went to South Carolina. I couldn't go to Nicaragua. So yeah. let me go learn about pipe tobacco in a pipe factory, pipe tobacco factory. So I went. That's and, freaking uh, cool. And it was yeah. awesome because there's so many things that we share yeah. that are common, right. but yet there's all so many things that we do differently sure. in the way we work and process the tobacco. Yeah. So I had a great experience. So then we started talking about, you know, could we do this to scale? Yeah. Could we commercially do something like this? Yeah. And uh, so we, uh, I started making pipe blends, and they were good, yeah. but I wasn't an expert. So I finally said, you know what, Jeremy, I'm just going to let you do what you do. Yeah. And yeah. I'll do what I do. Right. And uh, we worked up about 140 different blends. Nice. Of which we narrowed down on. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wanted the initial blends in Stillwell. I wanted them to be very recognizable to the pipe smoker. Okay. So, when consu- look, I didn't invite a pipe tobacco cigar. There's plenty of current pipe tobacco cigars, but they're almost always on the super sweet side yeah they're on the lower end of product okay. they're and i'm not taking anything away from but they're not using the tippy top premium stuff yeah and i wanted to make something that was completely top shelf right and uh so we made basically four pipe blends we made one that is in that sweet category an aromatic style one nice. you know that's kind of i don't know smells like i don't know red velvet cupcake with buttercream frosting nice. okay Nice. But it's a much more subtle, balanced. Right. It's not overwhelmingly sickly sweet. Yeah. It does have a slight sweet tip to it. Nice. But being me, I'm gonna call it cabeza dulce. Yeah. Right. We'll make yeah. it sound sexier. Yeah. Right. Nice. But it's really, I made the cigar blend to help put the pipe tobacco on display, but That's not let cool. the pipe tobacco also make it not a cigar. Yeah. And we took that same approach with the other three. One is an English blend, it's mm-hmm. burly and it's Orientals, and it's a very heavy dose of Latakia, but it's okay. that really fine grade uh-huh. of KB1 Cypriot Latakia, none of the Lebanese stuff, none of the Turkish stuff, no offense to the Lebanese and the Turkish, but <laughs> their Latakia isn't as good. Okay. okay, but I like the Izmir, that's from Turkey, and that's a really good tobacco. Wow. And so we made an English blend, we made what, what the pipe guys would call a vapor, okay. which stands for Virginia Paris. Okay. So in the pipe world right now, Vapor blends is kind of like the current IPA. Okay. That's what everybody's going gaga over. Okay. And uh, so we made a, I call it Bayou, because for cigar smokers, vapor has a negative connotation. Right. A heavy Perique based blend okay. with a, a really nice stove, Red Virginia, and just a touch of something extra to give it a little more flavor. And then nice. we did like a Navy Flake kind of style, okay. which is kind of more of a lighter English, but it also has a kiss of dark rum to it. But the nice. rum never comes in contact with tobacco. So huh. what I hope is I hope when a cigar consumer smokes it, they're going to go, wow, that's something new. Mm-hmm. I've never experienced that before. In fact, I don't think we told them what it was. Um, They'd be able to pinpoint they it. They wouldn't know. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm hoping for that the pipe guy who does regularly smoke a pipe, that when he lights one of these up, he goes, oh, yeah, that is uh, a Virginia proof. Oh, yeah, cool that idea. is an English blend. Yeah. You know, so... We took a really measured approach, yeah. uh, but they are four totally unique cigars. That's you know? really neat. And I had no idea the whole backstory there. And yeah. I, like I said, I've never smoked a pipe, so I would be like, I, I don't know anything about pipe tobacco. Right. Other than the, the aroma is always like you know, really, really drawing. I'm sure some purists out there will be like, oh, but you know what? I've been doing this 20 years, and if it's good enough for me, yeah. fuck that. I would think you'd you know? be your own worst critic out of anything in the world, because it seems like you're just very, like, just when you talk, you're always very hard on yourself. Like, I, I don't think my stuff's that good. When your shit, your stuff I'm is both. really, I'm incredibly really arrogant, good. and I'm incredibly, like, uh, nervous that everything I'm going to do is going to be a failure. No way, no way. 
not at all. It's that's exciting. I haven't smoked any of them, so I, I can't yeah. wait to try them. But that sounds you know really cool. It's just different. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know long term if there's yeah. a commercial purpose but for it. But what a cool way to take advantage of a situation in the sense that, like, like you said, I couldn't go to Nicaragua, so instead I went over here, yeah. thinking outside the box, and like, that's awesome. You know. And the thing really is, cool. I, I hope it's successful because yeah. I've already created four more. I've already created yeah. a Scottish, I've already nice. created a Balkan, I've already created an Oriental one. One of these days, pick... I'm going to sit with you and we're going to smoke a pipe because I've never done it and I'm yeah. like, yeah, that sounds so cool. I've always wanted to try it. It's That's just, really cool. It takes a lot of time. Mm. But once you get good at it. Yeah. It seems cool. Like it looks The thing about yeah. it is you just have such a wider variety of different tobaccos. Well, it sounds like you you're talking about I mean? Turkish, and I was like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm just kind of, There's literally you know. just so many yeah. different flavor profiles and nice. whatnot. And when you say, like, the, the flavor profiles, it's not that they're super, like, sweet. Because that's the only thing I would pick up when no, you walk into, like, the old tinder boxes and stuff. Is, you know? the, uh, is the aromatic. Okay. But the other ones, well, I'll tell you what. When we're finished doing this... Uh, I'll let you look at all the pipe tobaccos. We have them all here for people oh, cool. to look at okay. and smell. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm curious about it. That sounds really interesting. Wow. What a great then, of course, I went to visit my friends over at Protocol. Um, Juan Cancel was kind enough to kind of talk to me about the latest releases. Of course, the Elliot Ness. They are a smaller company, and they were one that was affected, uh, obviously, like like pretty much everybody. But they were probably more because of the the smaller boutique um, part of their business. Um, COVID really kind of got to them. So the Elliot Ness was actually supposed to come out last year and they released it this year, of course, at the show. And um, really cool idea, kind of following up to the Sir Robert Peel, which of course is the uh, father of modern day law enforcement. And so the Elliot Ness was cool. Same, similar look to the boxes and they had the natural and the Maduro offering. Um, just really nice. And then they also had the uh, cyber crimes, which I featured already on a top five. So not incredibly new but still new uh, but again just kind of going through they're always so generous you know I it stands out to me too that there are a smaller boutique company and yet they are extremely generous with the samples that they give to people like me to do reviews and you know to talk about whereas there are also um, the opposite side of that coin where you have sometimes larger companies that have um, way more resources and just flat out they just have more cigars and they're kind of like you know, here's one, here's two, and not to, I don't know, it just kind of just shows a difference of like people that are super passionate about their their babies, their projects that they've been working on, and they're just like excited for you to try it. So Protocol always stands out to me as being a brand just like that, always so giving, very generous with like, hey, try this out. Oh, you like that one here? Let me throw you a couple extra Lanceros, because he knows I like Lanceros, but just a really nice time to, to stop in there and um, you know, and visit with them. Okay, Juan, so tell me what's up with this beautiful new addition to your lineup. So this should have been last year's edition, but because of COVID, it just happened that we got it and released in January. So it's technically a new release for 2021. It should have been for 20. So it is what it is, it's a small company. I've said it before, like, the, you know, this business is like a highway, right? Bigger companies are like semi-trucks. They're, they're driving, things happen. A uh, bump in the road to them is they swerve and they can adjust and keep going. We're like a guy in the same bump on the same highway but on a motorcycle. That same bump could make us crash and burn. Yeah. So we try to do our best to keep up with things, but you know how 2020 is very really right, which is actually great that things are getting back to normal with here again, no masks on its own. Yeah. I love it. To the Elliot Ness. We had such great success with the uh, Sir Robert Peel that we said to ourselves, what do we do? We did a line extension of the majority guy, so yes. we did the Corona Gorgos. We said, besides that, do we continue this? What do we do? So we came up with the idea of doing a Lawman series. And what the Lawman series is, it highlights and showcases predominant figures in law enforcement. So uh, Sir Robert Peel is considered to be the father of Marlon Gleason. Yeah, he got a great cigar. Same thing with this one. So Elliot Ness is probably one of the most famous law, law, law men in the history because he's credited with uh, arresting uh, and putting away Al Capone. Yeah. So Al Capone to have a cigar, he's, you know, he's a, a bad guy. Criminal. Yeah. Why not the guy that, uh, that yeah. actually arrested him? Absolutely. So we did this. So this one is a, a Toro. They're both being done at AJ Salotano factory. Oh, nice. Yes, because AJ, uh, this is AJ's wrapper. Okay. It's uh, a Nicaraguan broadleaf. This is his proprietary wrapper, and he uh, 
uh, he, does, he doesn't want to sell to people unless, unless he makes it. So yeah, yeah. I wanted a Connecticut Broadly, but Connecticut Broadly is a hard, really hard to come by. Yes. It was Drew Estate basically buys the majority yeah. of it. So well, what happened was Hector, I, I was like, my, I've always, I, but I love Connecticut Broadly, and I wanted a cigar with Connecticut Broadly. So I went to Hector, like, what can we do? And he said, well, we're trying, we're trying, we can't find it. It's just impossible. Like, all right. But then Hector said, I got an alternative if you want. We could do Nicaragua Broadleaf. So AJ actually took Nicaragua Broadleaf seed, took it to Nicaragua, grew it there. And we've been to Nicaragua, and you've seen how it is. Yeah. He, he's, he's, mad. he's a magician. Oh, yeah. Stuff. I don't know so what he's doing to that stuff. So he's putting gold stuff. in that tobacco. It is gold. <laughs> and, then, and then painting it with crack or something. It's just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So this one's a, a Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan uh, broad leaf. And this one's a, a, a Nicaraguan. Never missed yeah. 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 Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So, so the Bass Reeves actually is this year's. And this is going to be the same thing, but unfortunately we didn't have the, uh, the Vistas in time. Yeah. So it's going to be like the Vista, the purple. I think about the color purple. I like it. Right? It's yeah, it pops. It's, it's, it's fun. Yeah. That's really cool, man. I like so it. So as soon as we get these in, I'm going to send you a box of this. These are so great. I'll you and I'm going to get you a box of these. No, I love it. I love all the little logos on there. I mean, yeah. this is very, we very want nice. want a bit more traditional, regal, yeah. kind of, you know, nostalgic look. When you Absolutely. Look, when you look at some of the old school Cuban boxes, that's what we want, the medallions yes. and stuff. But most of the times, these are medallions that they win, right? Right. So the, we did the medallions like the, like, like the, uh, the Lady of uh, the Themis, we did the Nicaragua flag, we did the New York seal, those kind of things. Yes. So we tell our story. That's awesome. <laughs> Very cool. So hopefully, as soon as we get these, I want to definitely send them to you. And this is the first. This is the first anything with AJ, right? Yes. Okay. Is, and now this is the new one. He's also doing this. Okay. Okay. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, how exciting! I can't wait to try it. Very nice. It beautiful box. I love thank it. You. I Very it. nice. Very nice. Thank well, thank you. Thank you. you do. You're no, thank awesome. You. Okay. Thank you so much for the love too. Appreciate it. And then naturally, um, AJ was there. I talked to him. It's funny because I went through the half day that I spent. I didn't even take the camera, which is bad. But I just kind of went through because it had been so long since I had seen everybody. I went through and just, you know, talked to people, gave hugs, and just tried to kind of see what was going on. And so I did that the day before with AJ. And so when I went back, um, it was kind of a brief, his booth is always so busy. And it's funny because it's a mixture of retailers, but also a lot of just industry people that I know are in there just picking his brain, probably trying to soften him up for like, for the big ask, which is like, hey, can you make the cigar for me? Because you know, he makes cigars for like half the industry now, it seems like anything that he does, his tobacco is like gold. It just smokes incredibly. Anything that comes out of AJ's factory, you know, is gonna be damn good. So it was good to see him, see his staff, and you know, just kinda go in. They had the same type of booth that they normally do. Actually, no, their booth was slightly smaller than normal. Uh, the last few years, they've had a little bit bigger booth um, this year was a little a little smaller than normal, but you know AJ was still there, which was great, and then his entire team it looked like was there, and they were of course right across from Nirka Reyes, who is my girl, Saga Cigar. She was there with um, all the De los Reyes brands. Of course, they make cigars for for some different um, people as well, but the whole Saga lineup was there, and it was nice to see her and see their staff and they could grab cigars and, and smoke them and catch up a little bit. So that was fun. I also mentioned on the what's in the bag, um, stopping in a couple different times, both days, um, stopping in with my good friend Luis Falto, who has been, been in the industry for uh, about 25 years or so, 26 years going on. And of course his new cigar, um, which I have a couple with me that I'll probably be doing a review on, but it's always great to sit in his booth. He always has coffee. His, um, his staff is always so friendly. And he's another person that I love to just sit down and kind of catch up and find out what's going on. He always knows everything going on in the industry. And um, just, it's like sitting down with um, an extended family member that you hadn't seen in a couple years. So it was kind of like that. And I did that both days, you know, sitting there and just catching up with Luis. Moving on to the Cigar Oasis booth. Um, you know, it was great to see them this year, their family, of course, they had a recent loss. Um, I believe it was in the beginning of the year or the end of last year. Uh, the founder of their company uh, passed and he was just a sweet man. But it was nice to see, um, you know, the his family that was still there as well as um, just kind of catch up on their new products. They, of course, had this awesome ashtray, which I uh, will be doing some cool giveaways in the very near future, so stay tuned for that. But the ashtray basically closes it's this really cool thing. So I'll walk you through that. So Hi, Delicia. Thanks for coming by. Absolutely. Welcome to Cigar Oasis. Thanks for the drink. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, we lost Al uh, this year, so we put his picture oh, here. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, just, just I was wondering recently. where he was. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh. Um, Such a but sweet he man. He built this company uh, as a post career project 24 years ago, wow. and it took off to what it is today. Uh, so, and I don't think he's ever missed a show since yeah. uh, 98. Wow. So, uh, I'll be Aww. drinking here. And, um, and uh, he was always passionate. The next product, the next project. Yeah. So, we are releasing something new this year. But just quickly before that, we have the full line of Cigar Oasis 3.0 humidifiers. Nice. Um, and in uh, early 2019, we released the 3.0 uh, versions, cleaned up the design quite a bit, newer ribbon, large uh, LCD display, backlit, and that's something that people kept asking yeah, for. It's yeah. got the built-in smart, uh, smart humidor technology with an option, optional uh, subscription. It used to be like a separate attachment piece, so we built it in so you don't have to buy anything else if you want to use it. And then um, our hygrometers, and we just, um, well, it's just, it's been four years, I lose track of time. But this is our Ash Day. That's it's a cool. Patented product, and it's great for indoor, outdoor, patio. Yeah. And you just sort of seal it as soon as you're done smoking. Oh, and that's cool. So, and I'll tell you what cool. we're going to do. We're going to send you a case after the show oh, wow. of 24. Nice. And you can, uh, we can, uh, viewers can, uh, oh, however you I that. like that. So you guys okay. watching, comment, and maybe you'll get one of these okay. little beauties. I love that idea. Yes. Very cool. You know what we're going to do also? We're going to put your logo, <laughs> the Cigar Fiction logo on it. Wow. Yes. Hey, this is this I is all in impromptu. I'm super stoked about that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank How you. exciting. Thank you. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. We get so many calls. People saw the our Magna. Uh, your oh, video, your good. video tour. Awesome. So, yeah. I love to hear that. No, I, I still, I mean, that's what I use, so I, I love it. Oasis Yumazone, we call it. Is this and for facials? No, I'm just kidding. It, it really works <laughs> for the dry yeah, That's awesome. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, so it's a complete solution for walk in humidors. Anything nice. from your average smaller uh, smoke shop walk in. Yeah. We even have it in warehouses. Nice. We've been working on this for about a year and a half, testing. Yeah. People wanted something that was low maintenance, straightforward, but yeah. powerful enough to recover humidity and the sure. large traffic walk sure. in. Sure, yeah. So we're Very releasing cool. it now at the show for a great price. Awesome. And uh, Oasis Humazone comes with an RO system, so it's the full kit, wall mounted, so it doesn't take up much space. Nice. Yeah. So Oasis Humazone. Yeah. Very cool. I like all the, so it's basically, it looks like it's low maintenance as far as like you kind of well, just get it going. Uh, and that's behind, you know, wherever you have the yeah, water line. Yeah. But here is just the guts of you, this is nice. the whole system. Oh, that's great. So it's, it's got the water tank inside, it's auto fill. Nice. And it's got a flush option, so you don't need to go in there and yeah. clean it. Oh, very cool. And you, you can set it from anywhere from, you know, 40 up to 95. Yeah. And this is instantly evaporated, so you're not going to have moisture yes. soaking on the cigars even yeah. if they're unwrapped. And oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. had a chance to talk with uh, Jorge Padron, of course, the Padron family, I say it all the time, they are, <clears throat> they just are such a classy family. And it's so cool to have seen, again, over the last several years, to watch as they bring in the younger family members that come into the trade show. And I've seen them now, like, I remember a couple years ago was the first time they had um, some of the nephews in there kind of talking to the retailers and stuff. And so now, of course, they're pros. They've been doing it now for a few years. But to see all of their faces and watching their family grow is just really fun. And then, of course, getting um, a fabulous cigar to sit here and smoke with you guys. Um, but they did have a special show release that was for PCA attendees only. So if your retailer friend happened to attend PCA, you can find these um, in their brick and mortar. And that is a special Family Reserve 95. And I believe they had a natural Ana Maduro in that one. And again, it was exclusive to people that were actually attending PCA, kind of like a motive for, pe for more people to attend. So I thought that was a cool way of showing support for the industry. And last but not least, I, was, I had a chance to catch up with my good friends over at El Artista. Uh, Ram is somebody that, um, he's the, the head of um, El Artista. He just does a great job of like, I tease him all the time because several years ago it was, he was kind of new to doing the interview thing. And so I was one of the first, I think, to sit down and do an interview with him. And he was very nervous. Of course, now he's a pro, but I have to always tease him about that. 
but he did walk us through the new line. So they had some line extensions, some si some Batola extensions to their Buffalo 10, as well as the new Slugger. They have a five by 50 that they're offering instead of the massive, huge, uh, gigantic one that they initially launched for the big Slugger. They had some really neat limited edition custom humidors that were again, just a, a not too many of them floating around, but really cool custom local artist type of thing. Um, love to see that. And then I was kind of uh, focusing on the little fugly cigar. So that's just like a little cheroot that's rolled and it's totally freehand, no mold. And it's literally like a $3 cigar using really good tobacco. So just kind of something to look out for if you happen to be um, in a in a mood to not spend a lot of money and just grab a handful. Maybe you're going you know to an event with friends and you just want to grab some little cigars. Um, kind of fun. So the fugly cigar, um, again, like a $3 cigar kind of a thing, as well as the Buffalo 10. Um, I really enjoy that cigar. I think it's the best cigar on the market that's $5 or under. I mean, it's a really, really great cigar for five bucks. I've always told them that. I feel like that's, the pricing doesn't match the taste on that cigar at all. It's really good, for, especially for $5. So quite the steal. But again, in closing, um, hopefully you didn't mind my kind of narrated version of the show this year. Um, again, it was different, but it's also the first time that people were coming back together after a whole year of nothing and dealing with all the COVID restrictions and all of that stuff. So hopefully next year there's more people in attendance and more exhibitors, but I was really happy to see those that did um, participate and, you know, brought the whole booth and everything there. It's a lot of work to set up and take down and just to, to be there for that week or however long it goes on. So hats off to all of the, those in attendance. And for those of you who um, watch these videos from home, thanks so much for the support. And I, hopefully you have a chance to try all the different cigars that are coming out. They'll be, you know, of course, shipping to retailers in the next month and two months. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get the shipping stuff done, but definitely check your retailers and see what's new. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers.